Hello everyone. Welcome to the Ec Ecología Profunda Butterfly Talks panel. Um, my name is Albert. I am from the Kumeyaay territory in the San Diego Tijuana border in the Californias. Um, I have been here around the cover cities since about two years and it has been wonderful because it is in its essence an ecological exercise of making unexpected connections and coalitions and encountering all kinds of people who engage in these other ways of knowing. It is in essence a stone soup and I feel that's the intention with this butterfly talks panel. It is this notion that one person is alone, but two persons are an army. You can make war with each other, or perhaps it is not an army, but it can be a forest and ecology. Two persons are more than two. Um, therefore, perhaps, perhaps what we aim in this session is to bring light to these possibilities of learning, of, of being in the world in a way that we are aligned with life. Ecologia Profunda is deep ecology. And with this deepness, it is a long range. It is, it reveals to us that ecologies are, everything is an ecology. Um, the word comes from oikos, a Greek word, which means home. And we can fit, sometimes um, if we are lucky, we can find that home in various places. And I'm sure that each of us here comes from a different space. And one of the attempts of deep ecology is to bring attention to those relationships because um, with attention, possibilities um, can grow. This is a wording exercise of um, creating aliveness out of aliveness. Um, I will, perhaps I will start. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if that was a good introduction to the ecology. Honestly, I'm not an expert on that. I'm an, an expert, so don't trust and, and don't, don't trust everything I I say. Um, these stories don't belong to me, but I belong to those stories. Um, I'm just a passenger, like a bird that comes to a flower and then jumps off. Um, I will share my screen. If, uh, if that's all right. Um, can you see it? Yes, we can see it, Albert. Okay. Um, I, I didn't speak about myself. Um, my name is Albert, again, um, for those who are just um, coming in. I am an oceanographer, a marine scientist. And I have this deep kinship with the ocean, especially 
um, the dimension of stones and fossils. That was my starting point because each stone is unique. Each fossil tells a story and the ocean is this um, constellation of many stories weaved together. That's why it's so dark. That's why it's so frightening in the night. And this talk, um, I named it the Conference of the Seals. It is a uh, it is um, in honor of that book of the Conference of the Beards, where um, every beard of the desert comes to, to ap appreciate, to take a decision or to talk amongst them, themselves and then emergence um, happens. It is also an ecology of echoes. In Spanish, echo shares the, the same word with echo. Um, therefore, what I seek with this presentation is perhaps um, to share that seed of how can we create an ecology of voices, like a chorus, like a song. And here in California, sometimes you can hear the seals um, singing in the night and you wonder what do they want what are they talking about we'll start with this quote by john moriarty he's a irish ecologist mystic and he says that it's only wish is to be as accepted as a wild river um, he says that um, nature gives us everything. We don't need to build bridges or canals which reflect ourselves. Because um, if we will just accept the rivers in their turbulence, where we don't find ourselves reflected, um, then that will guide us towards somewhere else, um, towards the deep of the river into unexpected vistas and holes on the forest. Um, it is this, um, this is in contraposition with modernity, which seeks to shape everything in these sharp edges and Euclidean geometries. Um, Moriarty says that the anaconda can constrict me and eat me, but the anaconda can also be the canoe that carries me up river. And it can maybe the the wild can save us. And from my experience as an oceanographer, as a geologist. I find that each stone on the, on the beach, each stone is unique, it is singular, but it is also relational. In a stone, you can find the mountain, and in the mountain, you can find the stone. And in my land, in this Kumia territory, there are lots of stones, and it is also a whale country in the sense that here we receive every winter, every spring um, caravans of whales who come from the Arctic latitudes to give birth to their offspring. And this reflects on the myths that are around the land, um, stories about, me about people who um, they taste human meat and they grow wings and turn into eagles and they will seek to destroy um, humanity but a whale came and they fight and the whale creates the, the ocean so that it can pursue these eagle men and 
and block his his feeders so that the whale can create a re refuge for the people. Um, we are people of the desert. Therefore, I think this reveals um, this quality of the sea, this quality of the night to um, give us a, a sanctuary from the light that seeks to evaporate everything. And there are stories of mermaid, mermaids and whales in the Gulf of California who rescue um, seafarers and people lost in the sea. Um, I'm drawing some inspiration from Ireland, from those stories of human people who turn into seal people. And there and this suspicion that the whales and the seals know something that we ignore. And I am a Capricorn. Um, in life, I used to, to be so much time in my head. And I, I think that perhaps the stones were my, my fears, my start with deep ecology. Um, because each stone, as I said before, it's unique and it produces a, a unique so sound. You can extract them with, uh, with another stone or a metal piece and it will emit this um, special echo. Um, I think that I find that goats are really experts on, on moving through the mountain because um, the sound that the rock produces um, it ha it has a certain logic to it. And um, basically, the mountain, while you feel the stones, you can move through it, and eventually you will find a river. And if you follow that river, you will reach the sea. Therefore, for me, ecology. Deep ecology is also um, an ecology of echoes, an ecology of voices, because nature tells you where to go, and nature um, shapes us, like the wild river of Moriarty. If we just follow her her con council, then we will need to create all these structures and. Um, borders, we will flow like mountains flow and walk because um, the tectonics are also an expression of the earth. Yet I have found that this definition of deep ecology is kind of restricting because if there is deepness, if there is a depth, there must be also a shallowness and I think that and I find that the mountain has a continuum with the ocean the ocean can be shallow or it can be deep and also the weather um, sometimes we we feel it on our very very own body and weather is something that is experience and the ocean also has this um, temperament. The shallow and the profound, sometimes we cannot separate them. And that's also true of experiences. And that's also true of these um, coincidences or encounters with bugs or like those times when a butterfly appears to land on your hand for an unexpected reason. That's the subject of meteorology, um, which deals with meteors, things that happen and then vanish. And that's the experience that I had with watching the stars at night in the desert. It was um, this really deep moment, but also a shallow moment because it was accessible for me. It wasn't an intellectual act, but, but something um, 
in my got that emerge. And with this question of what is um, shallow and what is deep, um, it drove me to ask myself what was the color of the ocean? Um, because I feel that its density, its relational density, and it's not an answer that we can give. And it reminds me to a saying amongst Irish fishermen who say that only the seals can know. And it's this suspicion again that maybe stones speak amongst themselves um, when we don't see them. Um, it's very funny how seals, um, they sometimes camouflage themselves as rocks on the beach and you don't see them. And then that stone disappears. And it's a really creepy feeling. Um, and there is this, um, in Ireland, there is this selkie myth about this woman who has a magic cloak, which allows her to turn into a seal. And this selkie often appears um, on the shore, um, strand and found by a fisherman. But this fisherman steals her cloak and hides it amongst his um, possessions. And this selkie then forgets about her own past and experiences. Yet it comes a night, a stormy night, when the fisherman is out in the sea and the selkie encounters this cloak and then she follows the rain and enters into the waves and becomes the sea herself. Um, I feel that what she's doing is like this notion of the spiral. Um, when you start to co-create with nature, with the ocean, um, the division between seal and human, um, it can, it enters into a kind of synergy where maybe we can follow um, the advice, the Council of the Sea, um, while circles, um, they often superpose each other. And John Moriarty um, gives this example of the dolphin that um, millions of years ago, um, they were like us, they faced a dilemma. If to shape nature on their image or to let nature shape their bodies. Um, they followed the leader and they asked the ocean to, to shape um, their bones to the form of its waters. And I think it is not for the dolphins, it wasn't a decision of going straight forward, but turning its head back. Um, in this sense, the past was ahead of them and the future was behind of them. Um, there, wasn't this, there wasn't this division between like us that we think that the past is irrelevant. And I feel that we are at this point that perhaps that fisherman has left us alone in the house and is not and he cannot see us because we are not a possibility for them. Um, perhaps this is the time that we can reclaim that magic coat and cloak and follow the rain too and do research in unexpected ways. And this is my, I have been trying this Eco Citizen Research Labs where I have been carrying this aspiration of doing research with more than human world um, 
in the sense that even whales are doing research. And I think that I find that um, these seals, uh, these myths um, tell us another ways of relating with this more than human world. And that even if that knowledge is not um, really, it's not conventional knowledge, but it is relational in, in a sense, it emerges from the circumstance. And um, we have, we had eight sessions already and the relations that have come from those um, reunions have been really nourishing for me. So I feel they are kind of a conference of the seals in the sense that we are um, post-activist, we are fugitives of this, um, um, of this Euclidean attempt to mold us into, um, into Euclidean shapes. Um, I think the, that's my <laughs> my talk. Um, we are we are hosting the next Sun Research Lab in two weeks, um, so I will I will um, post the updates of where you can join. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.